the Lost in Space B9 robot build has begun. Sort of. I haven't made too much progress because the way this thing has to be built is every step I have to figure out if I have to build it first, light it first, or paint it first. And it's just very slow going and every time I get to a step I realize I need to order a new part. So I still got more parts that are uh, I'm waiting to get shipped to me. However, show you what little I have at the moment. Um, this is just filling in the seam line here. Actually, it isn't a seam line. It's more of an offset on this little thin plastic rubbery part. Just filled it up with uh, some... Where did I put it? There it is. No, that's not it. There it is. This is a Vallejo plastic putty because you can put this on with a brush. Um, makes very, you know, effective for filling in little ridges. And it's actually marble powder in uh, some sort of paint solution, I believe. But anyway, you brush it on, which I already did. I'll just probably do one or two coats and I could sand that down. So that's about the only thing that's been put together, actually. Uh, I want to show you some of the parts that I got so far. Uh, this is the lighting panel from, I want to say Mech Lab. I'll put the... I'll put a link below to it, but let's say Mech Lab for the moment. Um, so this goes into the chest, like so, like that. Uh, there are some modifications you have to do to get it to fit. There are instructions here. It's about uh, cutting some, cutting the clear chest panel piece together, and then more painting instructions. Very detailed instructions, though. Eighty dollars for this little thing, which sounds very expensive, but I. Uh, there's no way I could have put this together as cleanly as this is. I mean, it even has the, you know, the curve for the chest, so it fits properly. Very nice. But this goes together. One 9-volt battery. Let's try that the right way. There we go. And we get a bunch of cool little blinking lights. Pretty neat. So that's going to get slotted in. And this is an example of... I have to put this together and paint everything before, of course, I can get this in, so that's part of the painting, waiting, installing stuff. Some other parts, the lights have to go in first. Um, so there's that. I have the sound card, so we're going to get some sound on our robot. This is from uh, Big Dogs. They sell a wide variety of sound items like this, mainly for greeting cards, but stuff you can put in toys as well. And of course it works for models. And this particular one is a USB version. It, uh, it comes with a little adapter, but that's a standard. I forgot exactly what type of USB plug that is, mini USB or whatever. But anyway, you plug that in, in your computer. It comes with software. Had a bit of a problem trying to get it hooked up my computer because it wouldn't recognize it. And then there was a supposedly a download fix which didn't work and then I was unplugging and plugging it and suddenly it just started working so if you have issues with it really can't help you because I don't know how I fixed mine anyway you hook it up to your computer load the sound files into here and then you have the buttons here which I'm gonna be replacing with different buttons eventually but um, that's about it the sound files uh, online Actually kind of hard to find. It's easy to find the sound files from the robot in Lost in Space, but it's hard to find good quality ones that don't have like the soundtrack behind them. So uh, again, online, I'll put the link below. I found someone who cleaned up the sound files and also put the robot working noises behind them. But anyway, let me pull this off to the paper, off the paper so you can hear it a bit better. And one of the buttons actually already broke, so let me grab another one here. Another one. Caution. I have remained highly energized and will cause fatal injury Oops. if touched. I haven't, there was no Danger, Danger Will Robinson one, fortunately, but I like some of these because they're, they sound good for something on a, a little model robot that people are going to touch, like that previous one. Alert, alert. There is a dangerous alien among us. Slight danger. <laughs> So this is going to go somewhere, 
<laughs> I'm thinking about putting it in here because this is a thinner material and hopefully the sound won't get muffled as much. I thought about putting it in the base and drilling some holes for it, but I'd rather have it coming from the robot, not the, the sound coming from the robot, not the base. And um, that's about it for the parts I can show you. I still have a lot more on order. Uh, the problem here is the whole bubble head thing. Initially, I wasn't going to bother lighting it because this is really complicated in the brain of the robots. On the show, you have the lights that light up. You have all these little hieroglyphic things on each side that blink in different ratios. Uh, then you have, oh, the lights on top, which also blink separately from these lights. And then you have the little antennas here. Uh, finger lights as they call them, which blink in uh, two different sections and didn't know how to do all that. Um, originally, I just I was going to order another circuit to see if I can get them to blink because I was just going to leave them just lit and that's it. And then I realized you can just buy um, blinking LED lights, which apparently is a roughly new technology because I found an article from like four years ago saying there's no way to make LEDs blink unless you put a circuit board, a 555 timer chip on with them. But then um, I found LEDs that just blink on their own. So I got some of those on order and I'm gonna try to get them in here. It's a lot to put in this uh, little space. So I don't know if I can do it, but that's what I'm waiting for now. But in the meantime, I can start on the bottom of the bottom of the robots, the legs and all that, and start working my way up. So let's begin with that. I have feet done. Well, together, I should say, because they're nowhere near being done. Got the left and right tracks together, and you can see very easily on camera, there is a huge gap there. So I still have to fill this and sand it all down, and that's gonna take some work. Um, but I got both of them together. And a couple of the issues that have come up so far. I'm gonna have a lot of wiring. Oh, where did I do with it? There we go. A lot of wiring put in through here. And while there are gaps, I decided to open them up slightly more, but there is a little slot here, which I probably could put the wires through. But like I said, I don't know how many wires I'm putting yet and make it easier, I open this up. Did that by using a little Dremel razor saw thing, but rather than using the Dremel, I put it into my standard skill cordless drill and by using this instead of the Dremel, this inside of Dremel it's just going to melt the plastic. Uh, with this I can actually cut through it so that's what I use to cut that out. That and a pair of pliers. Issues I'm having here. Now I know Mobius came out with one or two other B9 robot kits and I didn't buy or build any of those but I'm wondering if this is just a scaled up version of one of those because couple issues I noticed. First of all, there is the obvious, very obvious little peg there that helps you to line up both of the feet. And if this kit was in a smaller scale, like the other Mobius models, that wouldn't be such a big deal. But this thing is so huge, that's quite evident. So I'm gonna have to cut that off and put a some sort of brace in here in the middle of it so it's not as obvious, because that looks terrible. The other thing, I should have painted the inside of this section black before putting on the plates here because there is space you can see inside if the light hits it properly. You can see some clear, you know, bare plastic in there. So hopefully I can get in there with the airbrush and darken that up. But uh, would have been a lot better if I left this off and painted that first before slapping this on. But oh well, I do these things and do them wrong so you can do them right. And so that's the feet right now. Again, as I said before, this is a slow build. The other issue I had, the bad news, is the skirt. I tried using the Marble Dust Vallejo Plastic Putty on this stuff and unfortunately this material it ended up just peeling right off. There's an example here, I got some more in here. It didn't stick at all. So I gotta come up with a plan B to take care of this little seam line. Filing it down really didn't work. Scraping didn't work, so 
I'm gonna put a coat of primer on it first and then try again with some putty or paint to fill it up. Or hopefully, maybe once I get it primered, you won't see it at all because it's not very visible, especially on the lower leg portions. But we are starting from the bottom and working our way up here. I was hoping I was gonna to get to the painting at this point because I think I'm getting to the point where I have enough video footage for the first part. But um, this is taking a long time. Um, trying to fill up the seams here on just the leg feet portions. And you can see how much squadron green putty is here. That's because this piece, it's not just a gap here, it was totally off center. So I had to keep filling it up and sanding it down and filling it up and sanding it down until I have a smooth surface. And I'm not even done yet because I still have to primer it and then double check to make sure everything's filled. And just looking at it, I just noticed there's, I gotta fill in the gaps here as well. And on this piece, there's a little gap. I'll have to use some epoxy putty to uh, get the shape proper there. Cause that's a little hard to get in and fill in with the squadron. But um, I cleaned off the little nubs, the visible nubs here, and I just put two of the same width of just little bits of plastic. So that'll be more hidden when everything's together. And I got the bottoms on. I cut out the center so I could run wires down into the base. And they give you holes in it for some reason. I don't know what. I wanted holes in it because I'm going to attach it to the base with screws so I could un I could take it apart if necessary to fix wiring. Um, but the holes, it was kind of hard to get a screw in there later, so I drilled in new holes. This was a solid piece, so I just cut out the center, and they tell you which one goes on the left and which one goes on the right, which I don't know why, because it's on the bottom, and I don't know why there's holes in it to begin with, but whatever. So there's that. I got what is going to be the base at the moment. I was gonna use, a, I really wanted to use a clear acrylic base like I did on the Romulan Bird of Prey. However, I couldn't find one that was the right size. Uh, I think I used an IMAX case, IMAX case on that, and they don't make, IMAX like discontinued the majority of their cases and I couldn't find one with the proper size. So went back to Michael's and I got this. This is a shadow box that I've already ripped apart and I will have to build a surface here which I'll probably I don't know if I'll leave the edge here I may build it up so it's flat which if I do that it is kind of a lot of work I probably could have just built my own box out of wood but I really don't trust trust my uh, woodworking skills to build something perfect and again I wanted acrylic in the first place so this is the base for the moment. Don't know if we'll uh, be using it. And I figured it was gonna be wood or metal. And it's actually, this is some sort of very stiff foam with a very thin, I think it's plastic covering on it. So I really can't sand this. And there are some little chinks out of the corner. So I will have to fill it. And again, I don't know if this is gonna work or not. And finally, parts continue to roll in. I got my buttons. So these are all gonna go on the side of the base to control the sound, which also these are gonna be a little bit, they're a bit too short for this box, so I'll just have to kind of glue them in. No big deal there. But that's where we are. I know uh, this first part hasn't been too exciting, but um, you know these builds start slow. In the next part, hopefully we'll start getting to some paint and beginning some wiring.